welcome uh, uh, to our um, yeah, second day of the virtual uh, conference. Um, and as uh, every year, it's my uh, pleasure of um, yeah, giving you a kind of update of what has uh, happened to the uh, technical infrastructure over the last year and also some kind of action lines to present you some kind of action lines for the for the future what's all going on and also to give you a bit of a of a peek behind the scenes because there's a lot of happening of things happening at uh, Claren and uh, some of these um, uh, some of these things are, are not always very visible. From that perspective, I think it's useful to, to give a bit of insight in that. Um, a special feature of this year's presentation is a kind of uh, site challenge. Uh, you will see some illustrations with numbers next to it. And the challenge for this year is to find a kind of uh, yeah, a common theme behind this. So I'll come back to it later in the presentation, but uh, please make up your minds. And if you have ideas about what it could be, you can also put it in the, in the chat uh, window. Good. Uh, over to the uh, actual uh, content. Um, so uh, let's start with an overview of some of the uh, technical uh, infrastructure uh, highlights of, um, of this year. Um, yeah, first of all, very important part are our centers and we're a distributed infrastructure. And so Claren is basically relying on uh, the technical infrastructure, on the know-how provided through our nodes in the network, the so-called Claren centers. Um, in the last year, there have been uh, two new B centers uh, recognized. That is uh, Portugal Claren in Portugal and the TIM Center for Information Modeling in uh, Austria. And we also had a successful uh, reassessment of uh, two uh, already existing uh, uh, certified centers, that is Claren PL in Poland and Claren.si in Slovenia. Uh, overall, there are uh, four more um, assessments uh, currently uh, pending. So our assessment committee is uh, uh, involved with this. And if you look at the overall picture, uh, we currently have 24 certified uh, B centers and uh, overall uh, 69 registered centers. Uh, and that's a, a steady growth. And uh, that also brings us to luxury problems, as you can see here uh, on the map, uh, that it's actually uh, has become quite difficult to uh, get all the centers uh, in, in one uh, single, uh, single map. But again, it's a luxury problem. So won't complain about that. Um, good, some, something else, uh, the federated login. So this technology which allows you to use your uh, own institutional credentials to get access to Clarence services uh, located somewhere else. Um, we currently have 23 out of the 24 member and observer uh, countries connected to the service provider federation. That means in practice that uh, some 1960 organizations, so universities most of the time, uh, are able to use this login. And we've also seen a growth uh, of the remote uh, logins uh, up to 2,240 logins per month uh, via the central discovery service. That's an underestimation of the total amount of logins, but it's a kind of indication of the, uh, of the amount. Uh, finally, also, and that's typically one of these things that has uh, happened uh, behind the scenes, there's now a simplified Claren account procedure. So if you don't have uh, an uh, account at one of these uh, 1960 organizations, you can also apply for a so-called Claren account. And there we have simplified the procedure uh, leading to well, less confusion in the confirmation process and also to a clearer overall experience for people who need to apply for such an account. Good, then we have, um, have the, the virtual language uh, observatory. There we have had uh, two releases, uh, 4.8 and 4.9, uh, that brought many new features, um, but some, some important things that made a change was the visualization of records. So it is a better indication of which languages are now uh, part of a metadata record. And uh, there's also been a lot of effort done on um, uh, embedding schema.org compliant metadata into the web pages of uh, the virtual language observatory, making it in practice compatible with uh, uh, other um, uh, engines like Google's dataset search that allow you to search through such uh, uh, metadata uh, records. Um, yeah, uh, there's also been a lot of work done on the metadata curation. Uh, for instance, uh, there is this uh, module 
uh, the creation module, which contains a link checker that is actually actively uh, checking whether links are still uh, accessible, available, um, and are storing information information about this that is then again used to, to display uh, reports. Um, and this has been ported to uh, Apache Storm, which gives um, a big improvement towards the scalability and the uh, uh, robustness of the uh, overall uh, setup. Um, also in the realm of the resource uh, families, um, the uh, uh, storage of the information that is put there is now um, uh, done uh, through uh, files that we store in uh, in GitHub, so it's more versioned, and it also allows to provide uh, better tracking of uh, uh, issues that uh, are uh, identified. Um, this is something where uh, Jakob yesterday also presented about, so I won't go into the details. The time does uh, not allow us uh, to to do this, but uh, it's it's um, yeah a significant uh, improvement of the overall efforts to curate the metadata. Good, then we come to the federated content search. Um, thanks uh, to the, uh, the efforts uh, of, uh, of some colleagues, uh, I'm thinking here of Leif Joran and Gregor at uh, the BBOA, there's a first implementation of a protocol extension supporting searching in password protected uh, uh, resources. Um, and that is something that uh, yeah, uh, should uh, uh, allow the uh, connection of uh, many more uh, endpoints and resources that were so far not searchable through the content search should be able to be uh, to be connected. This is um, experimental work, but uh, there is uh, a first uh, implementation uh, available now. There's also some new endpoints. So uh, um, the uh, French colleagues from uh, Cocoon and Ortelan have uh, provided a new uh, endpoint based on a new version of the uh, FCS protocol and also our uh, Portuguese Portelan uh, um, Center has set up uh, a content search endpoint. Then we have the virtual collection registry. Um, there's a new version or several new versions actually that have been uh, uh, created with uh, improved users and user interfaces, uh, better connectivity to the uh, language resource switchboards and as such also allowing for better processability of data that is put into a virtual collection. And uh, there's been a lot of focus on scalability, so to allow larger virtual collections. Um, now, one good example uh, here that we have uh, uh, created in the last year uh, is uh, uh, mentioned in this um, in this uh, persistent identifier. You can also find it uh, in the in the chat, um, and that is basically an example um, that, at a certain point, was uh, quite relevant in in the Dutch media. There was a discussion, uh, obviously connected to the, the whole COVID uh, situation, uh, about the usefulness of uh, face masks, where uh, one of the main experts uh, was referring uh, to a query in uh, PubMed, which is a repository for uh, medical uh, papers. Um, and uh, the whole discussion uh, spinned off from that. Now, what we have done here is basically uh, storing the results of that query in a certain point of time uh, as a virtual collection. And as such, that's allowing for uh, basically having a kind of um, snapshot of the situation at that time and also allowing you to be more uh, say concrete whether uh, you're communicating in say an academic article but also when when you're having a when, when discussions are taking place uh, society uh, based discussions like on, on twitter or so you can refer with one single persistent identifier uh, to all the papers that are mentioned here um, yeah, just one example of how a virtual collection could look like and also how it could be broader than just uh, a set of links to language uh, resources. This is something that goes broader and as such, you can also see that uh, services that are provided through Clarin also have a broader context, for instance, in the European uh, Open Science uh, Cloud. Good. Um, also, the language resource switchboard, which I, which I just mentioned, has uh, seen a lot of improvements uh, this year. Some prominent changes were um, an improved file format profiler, so uh, allowing it to recognize more file types that are uh, uploaded or connected to, for instance, uh, several, several kinds of uh, TI. Um, and there's also an, uh, an overhaul of the tool inventory, uh, which is now uh, uh, yeah, more... Um, more easy to, to grasp uh, through the use of a separate uh, repository for that and uh, much better uh, improved um, documentation. 
Good. Then we also um, have um, uh, some some backend services and some some uh, things on on service mobility that uh, deserve a bit of uh, of attention. Uh, well, first of all, we've we've have our um, uh, yeah. So it's a traditional monitoring of our central services and the uptime this year is 99.94%. Um, that's uh, yeah, uh, a bit better than, than last year, but I think overall this is a kind of number that we can, uh, yeah, that we can, we can proud uh, about. Um, there's been a lot of work on um, uh, the use of uh, VPN in the infrastructure. Again, this is something invisible, but it makes a big difference in terms of uh, providing easier cross server access uh, using uh, WireGuard. I won't bother you with the details, but this is the kind of things that, that um, yeah, is a lot of work sometimes to set up on, on the backend and can make a big difference. But uh, as good infrastructural backend, you, you will never notice these kind of things as, uh, as user. Um, and finally, something um, relevant to be mentioned here is the fact that uh, we participated um, in the uh, technical committee of the Reprolung um, um, shared uh, task as part of the ELREC uh, conference, uh, where Claren uh, system administrators have helped to set up a framework to deposit and replicate dockerized uh, experiments. Again, if you're curious about this, have a look in the chat. There's a link that has some links to this um, activity. Um, and again, to mention it, this was also connected to our activities within the uh, European Open Science Cloud. So uh, as such, um, connecting the reproducibility of um, language resource-based research with um, computational power available through the uh, European Open Science Cloud. So this brings uh, many things, aspects uh, together. Good. Um, then looking a bit uh, forward, uh, what do we see on the, on the horizon? Uh, well, first of all, there is um, a beta release expected by the end of the year. <clears throat> um, for the um, uh, SSH uh, open uh, marketplace. So this relates to the shock uh, project that Francisca just has uh, introduced, where uh, there will be a kind of a combination uh, uh, of, uh, of data sets, of tools, of training materials, publications. Um, and if you're curious about this, and I can warmly recommend this, uh, take a look on the, on the website or uh, visit the bazaar stall. Uh, um, uh, actually, I think it's not this afternoon, but it's tomorrow, um, where uh, this will also be uh, presented. Uh, and Francisca already introduced it. There will be a new uh, uh, website. New, not in that sense that everything that is there now will be thrown away, but it will be rather a kind of evolution of the current website that we have, which includes a migration from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 and a whole new theme. Um, well, obviously a lot of work, but uh, we should also uh, yeah, uh, reap the fruits from it more or less by the end of, uh, of this year. Good, that uh, brings me um, to a kind of um, uh, second part of my uh, presentation, uh, focusing at specific thing that has been uh, going on at the level of, the, uh, of, the, of our infrastructure. And this year, uh, the theme is on uh, publications. Um, well, this is actually some long-standing um, yeah, challenge, I would say. Um, and it's something that will be, of course, uh, familiar to uh, many of you um, that, that have been around in Claren or in other infrastructures. Um, and that's the, the challenge of keeping track eh, of Claren-related academic publications. Uh, ideally, um, we would like to have some kind of semi-automatic system that does all kind of processing and delivers us some nice reports at a certain point with uh, yeah, uh, publications. Now, this sounds easier than it, uh, than it is uh, because yeah, there are some questions connected to this. How do you detect the link to Claren? How do you define that? How can you search for it? And even if you know that, where to search for it? Because there is, um, well, not, um, it's not so obvious to search through all academic publications in, in one go. Um, now some important uh, caveats uh, connected to this uh, issue. Uh, first of all, it should be clear that um, just gathering the publications for getting some numbers out of it is not very meaningful. I mean, uh, it does not mean when you have more publications that there is more impact. Uh, there's been a very nice conference organized uh, on that um, 
uh, I think it was in yeah in 2018. Uh, you can see the the link in the in the chat about this. There's there's a lot of interesting publications on this topic. Uh, but just to mention that the number of publications does not necessarily equal the impact. Uh, and secondly, also the fact that of course that our national consortia do already collect some publication lists, uh, and of course that should be a very important uh, part of the solution. Still, it would be nice to have some kind of semi-automated uh, system because um, yeah, it, it would be convenient to have and it would also uh, relieve many people from collecting things uh, manually. Good, well then some, uh, some good news. Uh, first good news is this is not a COVID related chart. This is actually the number of uh, publications uh, when searching for uh, Clarin on Google Scholar over the past yeah, more or less 10 years. See, it's going up. Uh, obviously, that's a good thing, but there's a lot more behind this uh, simple, simple graph. Well, then we come to the to the bad news, um, and that is actually slightly related to the uh, picture challenge that you have seen uh, over uh, the presentation. Um, and I think the key word here is um, uh, ambiguity. Um, a very uh, interesting feature of uh, uh, human uh, natural language, of course, uh, but not so uh, convenient when we're searching for uh, Clarin related uh, publications. Just to give you some example, and I'm referring here to things that we have found when searching uh, for Clarin on uh, Google Scholar. So I'm trying to automate this more or less. Uh, first of all, uh, people uh, called Clarin. There's a uh, Marcus uh, Clarin, who is a biologist in, uh, in Germany who wrote quite interesting article on uh, the use of uh, dummy devices and uh, how to um, uh, enable possibilities in order not to, um, to stimulate people to take away these devices or to vandalize them. Well, this is um, an interesting article, but it does not really belong in the list of Clarin related uh, publications, obviously. There's more ambiguity. Um, there's actually um, a municipality called Clarin in the Philippines. Uh, you can find it over here. Um, unfortunately, it's an area that is often um, uh, threatened by earthquakes and therefore there's a lot, a lot of uh, uh, geological research in this area and therefore we also find many uh, Clarin related publications uh, that relate to this area rather than to our uh, infrastructure. There's more, uh, and I saw this one was uh, correctly recognized in the chat. Uh, congratulations. Uh, it's uh, a book from uh, La Regenta, a book from uh, Leopoldo uh, 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 Gar Garcia Alas, um, also known as Clarin, or Clarin, I should say. Um, but as you can see here um, in uh, some publications that are done, are made on the work of this author, uh, the Spanish I. Uh, is uh, is no no longer there anymore, uh, or um, Google Scholar doesn't recognize it, and as such, you get uh, false uh, positives. Well, there's actually even more, and uh, a recent uh, finding of another Clarin that we uh, that we found, I think it was in 2018, is the fact that there's now also an Indonesian uh, vlogster uh, who is um, uh, actually. A uh, producing lots of, of uh, videos on YouTube, has uh, I think about 2 million followers. Um, and of course those videos don't show up in Google Scholar, but what we've seen is that uh, people at Indonesian uh, universities have published papers on the sociological impact of her work. And as such also um, papers on Clarin Hayes that occur in uh, Google Scholar. So yeah, you see this ambiguity is quite a, quite a challenge. Okay, well, <clears throat> then um, forward towards some, um, some homework that we have been doing. Um, as you can see here, um, this is actually the, the, the charts that were presented earlier. This is searching for Clarin minus a set of irrelevant terms. So we are excluding things like authors who are called Clarin, uh, Hayes to uh, get rid of the, of the uh, Indonesian uh, vlogger. Um, we're excluding Leopoldo, things like that to make sure that we have kind of um, yeah, reasonable uh, uh, precision. Um, now, still, what we find is that in these results, about well, 20 to 30 percent of the of the results are false positives. So actually, this requires some manual filtering. Um, I'll come back to that uh, 
uh, later in this in this presentation. We've also compared the results to some other platforms that were advised uh, in several contexts to to have a look at uh, at uh, literature. Uh, one of them is Scopus, um, a commercial database with uh, with uh, articles. Um, uh, there is the Open Air Clarin portal, which has been created specifically to harvest um, Clarin related uh, open access uh, publications. There's also the Open Air Explore portal. Uh, and as you can see here, actually, the number of results that we find is uh, rather low. So we, I think we can conclude from, from these preliminary results that uh, the, the recall is not good enough uh, in order to have a kind of yeah, representative overview of Clarin related publications. So that brings us to the last column in this, uh, in this table. And that is actually a combination of Google Scholar. So as explained uh, here, together with some manual filtering. And this is really a kind of, um, line of action where really a lot of uh, personal work has, has gone into. And I've uh, mentioned here a few names of people who did a lot, a lot of work uh, in this context. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, to see that the uh, daughter was uh, in the uh, participant, uh, participant list. So um, she has uh, started the work uh, already for publications in 2012. This was followed up by uh, Julia Mizerski, who did a lot of work on uh, publications from 2014 to 2016. And in the last uh, two years, we've had uh, Carolyn, who is also co-organizing this uh, conference, um, who has been uh, filtering uh, many of the uh, articles that were um, identified. Now, um, there is some uh, good news connected to um, this hard labor of doing manual filtering. The results of all this, uh, all this uh, searching and filtering uh, are now available. We have our uh, Clarin Zotero library. You can find it at uh, clarin.eu slash Zotero. There's also um, a link to that in the, in the chat. Um, and there you will find, um, uh, well, about 3,200 um, items of uh, literature. Um, that have been uh, identified and uh, this would also allow you to quickly search through well what we have seen in the last 10 years of, of uh, or many of Clarin related uh, publications. Um, good back Oh yeah, and then, uh, well, actually there's more good news because um, yeah, we've been thinking about alternative ways of trying to get rid of this ambiguity uh, problem. And that brings us actually to one of the main pillars of the Clarin technical infrastructure, the persistent identifiers. You can see an example here for one specific uh, language resource um, that comes with this nice uh, citation. Um, uh, overview. Here actually you can see the uh, persistent identifier which exists out of a, a prefix, a kind of common part for a specific Clarence Center and then uh, an identifier for the uh, active uh, resource itself. Um, it turns out actually that this is a very um, convenient way of searching for Claren related uh, publications. Um, as you can uh, see, uh, see here, um, we have uh, done a lot of work in collecting um, the publications uh, in Google Scholar that are actually referring to uh, persistent identifiers from Clarence Center. So I have to thank uh, Alex Koenig uh, for, for helping out with uh, gathering all this information and putting it into a big table. Um, I won't bother you with the details, but uh, the bottom line is that uh, if you put together all the, all the citations that can be found uh, for this, and we've done this only for 2018 and 19 so far, we haven't had the time to, to expand it for other years. Um, the result that you get to see here, especially if you compare it to the um, uh, full text search in Google Scholar and the, the manual filtering results, the fact that you actually get a pretty good recall. So it, it is a kind of representative overview of, of um, good uh, citations. Uh, there's an almost perfect uh, precision, no false positives with such a precise uh, search. Um, and actually you get quite efficient and elegant queries. What is uh, searched for is fairly um, clear and, and that, is, that is good. Uh, in terms of uh, maintaining this over a longer time of period. Uh, and after all, and I think that is an important part, this actually seems to provide a good framework to monitor our real goal. Having sustainable digital citations, it's clear we will not gather 
all Clarion publications uh, with this uh, methodology, but we will gather those citations that we think are very uh, worthwhile, that are uh, adhering to the right standards of making fair citations, so to say. Good, um, to, to conclude this, this uh, section, um, just a kind of small recap of how um, we are trying to, to stimulate the citation of persistent identifiers through uh, the Clarion infrastructure. Well, first of all, by providing access to an own prefix, uh, a bit comparable to an own domain name, uh, to make sure that there is mobility and independence. So you can move this prefix, for instance, to another server, uh, and also to make sure that there is this easy identification of data and tool citations. If you have your own prefix, it becomes a lot easier to track down citations that are referring to your repository. Claren Eric is providing support for this through our membership of EPIC so that we uh, provide access to handle identifiers, handle persistent identifiers, and our uh, recent uh, consortium membership of DataSite, which now also allows us to provide uh, DOIs and prefixes for DOIs to Claren centers. Good, that uh, actually brings me to the end of the presentation, uh, but not without uh, thanking uh, a lot of people who have been uh, making the, the, the work in the technical infrastructure uh, possible. So I would like to, to toast uh, people in this year's VIP chair. Uh, first of all, our assessment committee, that's Lena Cyprian, Dan, Josef, Ricardo and Thomas. Our central develop, uh, developer team, Alex, André, Menzo, Michal, Twan and Willem. We're very glad that we have Menzo uh, back on board, by the way. Uh, our developers and contributors from the National Consortia, uh, Bernard Chan, Emmanuel, Gregor, Kai, Leifjoran, Matei, Nathaniel, uh, Oliver, Tariq, and Thomas. And of course, our task forces, uh, which are also mentioned here. And the numerous people I've absolutely forgotten here to mention uh, who are working from the centers on the construction and the operation of the infrastructure. Um, now for um, some kind of uh, bonus um, uh, clearance that we have uh, identified related to this slide. Uh, I'll reveal it. Uh, there actually seems to be uh, a, a spirit from uh, Haiti called uh, Claren. Um, but uh, in some of the papers that we have found, it was actually uh, yeah, uh, miswritten as uh, Claren. So that's an uh, interesting other uh, ambiguous uh, Claren. And the other interesting Claren that we have found is a company uh, called uh, Claren Seating, uh, who provides some very interesting uh, citations or quotes on their website, which I, I also wanted to share with you, and known for providing years of dependable service. And uh, the final one I found very uh, interesting is uh, winners have been sitting on Claren portable chairs for years. Well, with these uh, reassuring uh, words, uh, I would like to advise you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.